Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Lecture 4-H of Useful Genetics. We're continuing our discussion of gen gene interactions in biochemical pathways. We're going to consider two more complex situations where genes act redundantly or where they act interdependently. So first, redundancy. Here's a different kind of biochemical pathway where we have the same product being synthesized in two different ways. It can either be synthesized by the product of gene C, protein C, enzyme C, making the green product from precursor 1, or it can be synthesized by enzyme D encoded by gene D from precursor 2. And these kinds of um, pathway effects are quite common, especially where genes have diverged um, after, for example, a gene duplication or they're members of the same gene family. They differ in the, sub the substrate they can use, but they produce the same product. Now, what would be the genotype, what could be the genotype of a variant that produces yellow peas. If the product is the green pigment normally found in green peas, what could be the genotype of a variant that instead produces yellow peas? And there's only one correct answer because either gene can do the job you're only going to get a mutant where the job doesn't get done, the job being synthesis of the green pigment, if both pathways, oops, back, 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 if both pathways are completely knocked out. Now, here's kind of a reciprocal process, the, the flip side of, of um, redundancy, and that's cooperation. Here's a situation where in order to convert the precursor to the product, you require the products of two genes working together. This is very common. Many reactions are catalyzed by an enzyme that consists of subunits coded by two separate genes, as we're indicating here. So gene E produces subunit E, and gene F produces subunit F, and together they convert the precursor into the product. So what genotypes would be possible for a strain that couldn't make the product? This time, there's three different answers because it could be the case that the strain was defective in step in producing protein E. So if it was knocked out for both alleles of gene E, you would not make the functional protein dimer that carries out the reaction, and the reaction wouldn't happen. Or you could be defective for both alleles of gene F, because if you're not making subunit F, the reaction isn't going to happen. There'll be no product. Finally, you could be effective for both genes. And then you make neither of the subunits and again make no product. So in this case, um, the masking is going in both directions. Um, a defect in production of protein E masks what's going on at gene F, and a defect in the production of protein F masks what's going on at gene E. So this has been a very short lecture, we've, but we've considered two kinds of gene interactions that are very common in biological systems, including in our own bodies. Um, situations where one goal is accomplished in two different ways, and situations where the products of two genes have to cooperate to bring about a goal. And we've analyzed the effects of defective alleles, and we've predicted the genotypes from the phenotypes in situations where we knew the genetic basis of the phenotype. 
Coming up next, we're going to move on to thinking about regulatory interactions. These are more complex to think about, but they're extremely important in all biological situations. And they're going to prepare us for the next step, which is to think about the genetics of cancer. I hope to see you there.